Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this awesome lightsaber effect inside of HitFilm Express. HitFilm Express is free and really powerful. Lightsabers are really easy to do inside of HitFilm uh, due to there being an effect called Lightsword 2 Point Auto, which means you just have to line up two points to the hilt and to the tip of your blade. So without further ado, let's begin. The first thing that you're going to want to do is create a composite shot out of your footage. So import your footage and select make composite shot. I'm going to call this tutorial, but you can call it whatever you want. Now I set my frame rate to 30, but that's just because I wanted it to be a standard number rather than 50. And then first thing I did was mute the footage as you're going to be going through frame by frame you don't necessarily want a sharp piece of audio in your ears. Then I also went through and cut out the bits I didn't want so I'm just going to do that now. Okay so now I have cut the footage down to only the portion of, that I want. Uh, we have to create a new plane, make it black and call it whatever you want and then press OK. OK so that has imported your plane layer. Now you want to search for the light sword two point auto effect. You want to drag and drop this onto the plane layer. Now as you can see you can't see your footage underneath your light sword so right click on it, blend mode and set it to screen. As you can see the core is blue when in the films it's a white core so you want to open the core properties under color you want to set it to white now just drag the tip point and the help point onto the correct places of your lightsaber because then you can have some more accurate settings to choose what the lightsaber looks like I'm going to set the tip of my lightsabers width to 22.5 which is its automatic value and the hilt of my lightsaber to 42.5 which this is going off of what my shot is like and then I'm going to change the core width to 50 so as you can see that now looks more accurate and it's more matched to my lightsaber blade I then also thought that this glow was a bit too bulgy and was it didn't quite match so I set my inner glow to being 10 pixels which now means that it's hugging the blade then I left the color the same of course you can change the color and all of these settings how you want them this is mainly my preferences you can also change the st stability and flicker of the blade I just left them the same but outer glow I set the width to being 50 and I changed the alpha to 0.3 as you can see it adds a really really subtle glow that just helps bring the shot together we'll change some of these settings later okay so as a whole this doesn't actually look too bad so far however there is something missing surely you'd have some form of light at the bottom here. You want to then zero out your position because we've checked that the points match up because we're going to be using point layers to determine the position of the blade because that means that we can add other effects like light flares to the hilt point without actually having to then go through and animate the hilt point all over again. So to do this you want to hit new layer, select point and then do that again and then rename the top one to tip and then rename the bottom one to hilt you want to then find the point layer and drag them to their positions now in the plane layer you want to go to the light sword two point auto effect and under hilt you want to change the position to hilt and under tip you want to change the position to tip and then set that to zero again so now you've got these points that now control where the blade is. So then I'm going to drag the light flare onto the plane layer and set the hotspot position to hilt. Then I'm going to zero out the position properties. 
That is far too bright and not the flare that I want to use. So These aren't the flares we're looking for. So then I'm going to change the type of flare to anamorphic spiked. Still, it's a bit too big and bright. So I changed the intensity to 0.3 and the scale to 200. Then I went into the global properties and changed the hue shift to 104. This is all personal preference and how big and how bright you want your flare to be and the colour, which is what the hue shift down here uh, determines. So that is now your lightsaber kind of set up for animation now. So what you'll need to do is activate keyframing on the tip position and on the hilt position. Now on each frame you want to reposition these points. So if you just go move ahead by hitting the full stop key on your keyboard then you want to grab the tip point and then just drag it to cover the blade and do the same for hilt. And you want to continue doing this until you have done your entire video. So it's quite a time consuming process. Okay, so I have animated through a small chunk of mine, however you'll want to go through the entire clip, it's just I've already done it and uh, once you get into the rhythm of doing it, it does get faster. However, if you want to add some Star Wars lightsaber motion blur, which is called motion persistence, uh, you want to open the motion persistence properties and set this to one times. Again, this is another thing that it's up to you how much you do for it. I also changed distort distortion to zero. So as you can see that has now created some lightsaber motion blur. Now if you just do a uh, preview uh, by pressing the play button that's in the circle next to the normal play button, then you will see a quick preview of what you have created and it's actually pretty cool how it's so easy to do however it does look really good of course you can add other effects to this base setup and create some really awesome lightsabers this is just a basic tutorial showing you the basics of the effect if you enjoyed this tutorial then please leave a like and subscribe thank you for watching see you next time goodbye